Hey everybody, we're going to do a quick install video for the grill bar. When you unbox it, it'll look kind of like this. It's folded in half and there will be some hardware. If you look over here. There will be two long screws with washers, lock nuts, washers, washers, regular nuts, and two short screws with some washers and nuts. The short ones are used to turn this into a long piece like so. Fold it out, line the holes up, and run your screws through. And they will thread in. Don't over tighten them, just get them snug. And snug up the two that were already in there, just to get them tight as they should be. Install your flat washers, lock washers, and the plain nut onto each one of those. And then tighten all four down. Now you've got your bar in one piece. Go ahead and remove your grill if you haven't already. When you get it out on the bench, you'll find on the back side two nuts that are holding the bow tie on. Remove those so that you can remove the bow tie. And once you pull the bow tie off, there should be two slots. Can you see it? Two rectangular slots. You're going to drill an eighth inch hole in the center of each of those slots. It doesn't have to be exact, just get it close as you can. Make sure you use an eighth inch drill bit. And then take these two long screws and with an eighth inch hole, you'll have to actually thread it in there using a screwdriver. And then on the back side, you're going to install on each one a flat washer and a lock nut. And once you've done that, that creates the mounting stud for the grill bar. So I'm going to get those two guys mounted on there real quick. And the next step is you're going to want to go ahead and get your bow tie put back on because once you put the grill bar on you're not going to have access to tighten these nuts down for the bow tie. It can be done, it's just a pain in the butt so you might as well go ahead and get this done now while well, it's easy. And then once these two are tight you can get the grill bar has one more set of holes that will line up with these mounting studs that you've just created. So when you lay the grill bar on, the bar is flat, the grill is curved. When you push down gently on this, make sure that the wires for the strips are out of the way. And this piece in the middle should bend enough to get the bar down so it sits relatively flush. Once you get the studs poking through, for each one you're going to put a flat washer, lock washer, and a nut on there. Then do the other side as well, flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. And cinch those down enough to draw the bar up to the back side of the grill doesn't take much and make sure that on the outer edges that the end of the bar is between these two ribs on the grill and that's it for the installation on the bar onto the grill the wiring is pretty straightforward you've got one end that has a single jumper and resistor the other end has two jumpers and a resistor. 
The way I like to do it is the end with two. I like to put on the driver's side. Um, so those will come over here. The three wire goes to your factory parking lights. So you undo the socket from the back of the factory housing. Plug this into the factory socket, the three wire socket, and plug whatever bulb you're running back into here. And then this will twist back into your factory housing. And the two wire, same thing, but for your inner daytime running light bulb. Um, make sure that on all three of these, the black wire lines up, I'm sorry, on the, on the pigtail, on the male end, make sure the black wire lines up with the black wire on the factory harness. If it doesn't, it'll cause it to do funky things. It's okay, just take it out and flip the plug around and get that polarity correct. So do that on the driver's side. And same thing on the passenger side. It's just a three wire. Again, make sure that on the pigtail, they're red, blue, and black. Make sure the side with the black lines up with the black on the factory plug. Now we do recommend that you add some dielectric grease to the factory sockets to prevent any kind of corrosion or moisture from getting in there and corroding those um, contacts. But once you've got everything plugged in, go ahead and turn the truck on and shift it to neutral or put it in gear and have someone watch from the outside and make sure that when you put it in gear, the daytime running light should activate and your white lights should come on. And then turn your parking lights on, or your headlights, and the white lights should come on with that as well. And then also hit your turn signals and make sure that A, that they're working, and two, that you've got them on the correct side. So if you hit your turn signals and you hit your right and the left one comes on or vice versa, um, just take the bar off and flip it over. Um, obviously you can check that before you do it too, but that'd be the only other complication I can think of. So that's pretty much it. Plug everything in, test it, then put the grill back on um, so you're not doubling up your efforts if you have to make some kind of adjustment. If you've got any questions, please hit us up, sparksmith.com, or uh, look for us on the web. Thanks.